Hi, hello everyone. I'm talking to you today from Montreal in Quebec. My name is Melissa Castillo and I'm an accessibility tester for now. I'm also a master's degree uh, student in political science. My presentation today aims to give you a better understanding of the reading experience of people with learning disability. And you need to note that I will base mainly this presentation on my own experience as a dyslexic reader. When talking about reading disability, we tend to picture one specific kind of impairment, but in reality, it's a wide range of disability. And one of those is learning disability. Learning disability that affect reading can include problem with phonological processing, reading fluency or speed, and even reading comprehension. Today, in order to give you an idea of the challenge that represents reading with learning disability, I prepared a small activity. It's a demonstration that aims to simulate what it feels to read as a person who has dyslexia. And you need to know that this is not representative of all people with dyslexia, and it's only a simulation of the difficulty uh, of reading with dyslexia, a text that is not accessible. So in no case, this is uh, representative of like what dyslexic people see. So uh, I have to say that the activity has been designed for regular reader, which is a uh, reader without print disability in that case, uh, to give them an insight into print disability. So for reader without print disability, we have provided you um, a document, a PDF document that contains the official learning definition according to the Learning Disability Association of Canada. And uh, the paper contain also some uh, more information about specific and more common learning disability. So we will give you two minutes to read it. For uh, people here who assist this presentation who have a print disability, um, we have provided you a Word document that explains textually what the exercise consists of for regular reader. And we also provide you with an accessible text version uh, of the learning definition according to the Learning Disability Association of Canada. So um, I give you two minutes to go read this and then we come back uh, together. Hi, welcome back. Um, so I have like just some questions for you to reflect on your the reading of the PDF document we provided you. So first of all, how was your reading? Was it harder than usual? I would expect so. Um, was it frustrating? <laughs> and if you did indeed find it harder to read uh, the content, do you think you understood and remember as much the content that if you would have like a normal uh, layout? Um, and I guess my last question is just to reflect how enjoyable or frustrating it would be to read a book in the format I just gave you. So this exercise is designed to simulate the constant need for attention. We have used different font and all of them have been chosen to be hard to read, even for regular readers. So if you find it hard, this is totally normal. That was on purpose. So uh, what uh, happened is the size um, and the font type change in the middle of sentences. And this, made, this is made purposefully to make your brain work hard. Um, your brain actually, uh, with the, the, the format I gave you, constantly need to adapt to the font and size. That helps to simulate the experience of dyslexic reader where the process of reading is more mechanical and less automatic. There's many researchers that um, define dyslexia as like the difficulty or the incapacity of automatizing reading. 
So what it means is um, for somebody who has dyslexia, they can understand the content. It's the actual decoding of the letter that is hard. Um, automaticity is a key feature for skilled reader. So regular reader uh, would read their book and somehow like forget that they are decoding letter and syllables and word. A bit in the same way than when we are walking, we don't think at every step we take. And so this exercise simulate of what it is to have to be focused and concentrate in order to decode the meaning. The reason why this is important is because as we all know, human attention is a very limited resources. Um, and just imagine if you would need to think at every step you take while walking in order to not to fall, it would probably get mentally exhausted pretty fast and you have like way more chance of having a moment of inattention and falling. Um, and in some way, it is a bit like that for me when I'm reading. Um, one other example is imagine reading an entire book in the format I gave you. It will be possible to do it. It would probably get like really exhausted and definitely not enjoyable. Um, if you're passionate about literature and you're a reader without permissibility, you probably know the feeling of forgetting the book in front of you and be totally transported in the story. Um, how enjoyable would it be for you to read a book in the format I gave you? Personally, I probably would uh, give up on this book. And this is the experience of many dyslexic readers that only have access to unaccessible uh, format. Um, so this is important because um, for literature or academic, uh, paper, the information is really important. And for dyslexic people, this need to like always focus on decoding can mean it's harder to access the content. And we want that everybody can access like equally the, the content. And that means finding a way for people who, ha who have dyslexia to not have to put all their energy on actually decoding the letter. Okay, now let's talk about page layout and uh, the possibility that offer uh, adaptable content. So if you have a text on your computer in the random and really frustrating format uh, I gave you, you probably just wish you could change the font type and size to be uniform. You probably uh, almost like imagine just selecting all the text and uniformizing everything. Uh, maybe even you would want to enlarge the line spacing because the text I gave you is pretty cramped. Um, with PDF, you can't do that. And this is especially why I gave you um, the, the, the text in a PDF format is because it doesn't offer the adaptability necessary um, to be changed according to your preference and need. It would be in a totally different story if I would have gave you the same content in a flexible and adaptable platform such as Word. Just imagine I would have sent you this in Word. Uh, probably some people would have taken the liberty of just selecting everything and changing the font type and adjusting to um, their preference. So I will just uh, now open with you um, the possibility that offer Word um, I choose to show you um, the possibility of Word uh, because most of people know Word, but you have to know that like a lot of these adaptable uh, features are available in many uh, accessible e-reader. So let's open Word. Okay, uh, now let's open the same uh, content that I gave you uh, inside Word. Um, the reason why I open it Word is because uh, it shows you the possibility of an accessible format in a very accessible uh, platform because Word is, uh, let's say, accessible in the sense that it offers the most possibility of uh, changing the layout. Um, but uh, we 
we'll see, but as well, like EPUB offer pretty much this uh, very similar uh, feature and possibility to adapt the content. So imagine that uh, I would have sent you um, this in a Word document. It would not be the same problem that if you receive it in a PDF, because in a Word, you can just select, uh, yeah, select all the text and you can choose uh, the font type you like, you can change uh, the font size and you probably would want to remove the bold, which make it a bit messy and you probably would want to change the, the line spacing so it doesn't look like a wall of text. And already it's uh, more accessible and I think for a regular reader this would be uh, way easier to read. Um, in Word, and I just want to show you uh, a feature called Immersive Reader. And this, uh, what I'm just going to show you now, uh, often are uh, available in e-reader, a uh, reader that reads ebooks. So here we have uh, the feature to, to choose uh, the width of the column. So we can choose the uh, narrow, moderate, very wide. Um, often for dyslexic have a very uh, narrow uh, margin helps because there's little word in one line and um, it ease the reading. Um, after there's the possibility to change the background color. Um, often it is uh, suggest for people who have dyslexia to, to use pastel and um, pale color in the background to reduce um, the contrast and uh, this feature such as uh, yeah, devising by label. Well, I don't use this one myself. And this feature, which is uh, very important, is the read aloud feature. So the read aloud feature allow you to have the computer reading all out, out loud uh, the, the text. Um, this means that pretty much you don't have any decoding and as a dyslexic you can access directly the content so let's hear official definition of learning disabilities learning disability association of canada 2015 learning disabilities refer to several disorders which may affect the acquisition organization retention understanding or use of verbal or nonverbal information these disorders affect learning individuals who otherwise demonstrate at least average ability essential for thinking and or okay it goes a bit fast um but it is possible to change the speed uh like for instance, if you read like a text that you would normally want to read uh, a bit in diagonal, you can use like really fast. And if uh, you want more precise reading, you can uh, slow down the reading. So let's hear. For reasoning, as such, learning disabilities are distinct from global intellectual deficiency. Learning disabilities result from impairments in one or more processes related to perceiving the Okay, now uh, let's come back to the publishing world. Um, offering a book in a text format is not exactly an option to the publishing industry. However, this is why EPUB 3 had been created. So EPUB 3 allowed to add a digital lock on the content while offering the flexibility uh, to adapt the content. So EPUBs allow you to format your text in a publishable format without rendering it inaccessible. When I say rendering it inaccessible, I refer to the fact that the publisher received the manuscript in the most accessible format, pretty much in a text format we see in Word, and it is the publishing process that makes it inaccessible. I say that because we often think as accessible publishing as something difficult or complicated or even mysterious, while in fact you can pretty much refer uh, to your doc file your text file as the accessible file. Therefore, when we talk about accessible publishing, we need to remember that the issue is always how to produce a digital book without putting obstacles for people with disability. I really hope this uh, workshop helps you to have a better idea of the experience of people with learning disability and also how EPUB uh, can be a solution in the publishing industry um, in order to give uh, people with learning disability access to the content uh, on an equal basis. Thank you.